As Henry Ford once said, if you think you can, or if you think you can't, you're right. So, welcome everybody, my name is Nicholas and in my weekly videos on this channel I will give you PhD level neuroscientific and psychological insight into how our brain works, success psychology and how you can become the best and highest performing version of yourself. And in today's episode I will discuss how goals alter our perception, how they reprogram our subconscious mind, why you want them and that is on a neuroscientific and a psychological level, how to set the perfect goals. And that includes the issues with smart goals, because there are some in fact, and how you can use your goals as a tool to enhance your self-efficacy. That is your belief in whether you can pull off the impossible. And as a little bonus at the end, I will also give you a mindset shift. So listen out for that to maximize your success. So without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. So, as I mentioned in one of my previous vi uh, videos, I'll link it in the comments for you guys, the reticular activating system in our brain stem, it filters out the vast majority of the incoming information into our brain. It filters out 99%, in fact, over it, over 99%. And that aside, there are four things, four, that always enter your conscious mind, no matter what. So we'll always be aware of these four things. And these things are usually things related to your survival. So that could be the car that's about to hit you. That's hopefully not about to hit you, that is. Or any information uh, related to people that you care about. Once again, check out my previous video for further details, but that aside, besides those four things, uh, what also affects the informational filter in your brain, so what controls your perception basically, is your beliefs, and on the other hand, you probably guessed it, your goals. And that brings me to the first important point, and that is that goals change your perception in a beneficial way way. For example, let's say you own a small coaching business and next you note down the goal to raise your revenues from 10k to 100k by the end of the year. So simply put, you want to 10x your income. Now, thankfully, our brain is a problem-solving machine. And why is the brain a problem-solving machine? Well, it's simple because it increases our survival. The better we are at solving problems, the greater our chances are to secure, for example, resources that we need to survive. So the smarter we are, the more likely we are to get clothes, money, and other things that we need to survive. And funny enough, even fame is a survival resource. And why is that? That's simply because the most popular and the most loved person gets the most resources from others. Makes sense, right? Anyhow, now going back to the goal of reaching 100k by the end of the year, you might even forget about it in your everyday life, but it's locked down in your subconscious mind. And what happens now is that the reticular activating system in your brainstem that is the information filter in your brain, it will now allow any information that is related to making that 100k uh, pass into your brain. So what suddenly happens is that you notice stuff. You notice stuff that is related to building your business and reaching the 100k. So for example, you might look at the video and you really, and you realize, uh, Hmm, this video right there in my information, uh, in, my ship, in my feed, it talks about attracting clients. I should probably watch it. So you watch the video, you listen to it, and suddenly 
then your attention might be drawn to a specific thing or sentence uh, that was mentioned in the video. It could, for example, be uh, in your coaching business, you give first. You give, you provide free value, you expect nothing in return. Because if you aim to help people, they will feel it, they will trust you, they will come back, and they will become loyal customers and make business with you. So it's basically the principle of karma. So once again, you become aware of all of these things that help you in accomplishing your goal. In this case, you might have learned that the simple principle of karma that is to give first and to help people in the first instance will give you the customers uh, that you want, the customers that will make your business successful. By the way, I know I wrote an entire article about the key principles of entrepreneurship, such as giving first and providing values first. I will obviously not cover this in this video, that'll be on the scope of it, but I will link my article in the comments. So check it out if you're interested in the success principles of an entrepreneur. But that aside, as I mentioned earlier, and back to the video, there's the fact that goals change the information filter in your brain. They change the reticular activating system and they will make you notice any information that is related to your goal. You scroll for your, through your Facebook feed, someone mentions a book. You look at the book and you realize, hey, this book, that could be interesting for growing my business. I should probably read it. And maybe one of your friends mentions that he has a cousin who runs a seven figure coaching business. You think, Hey, that's cool. I should probably talk to this guy, etc. So that is how it works. You set a goal, your brain will make you aware of anything that's related to the goal. And as such, you're pretty much more likely to achieve your goal. Now, besides changing your perception in a beneficial way to make you pick up anything that's related to your goal, your goals also reprogram your subconscious mind and they will help you to recognize patterns. Now, pattern recognition means that your subconscious mind, it pretty much starts to make connections. So it makes connections between the information that you now pick up and the information that's already safe in your brain. So in other words, that's when you become creative so that's when you get the sudden aha moments or those epiphanies that just pop in, into your mind after you set a goal. So basically, from a biological perspective, two things happen in your brain during such an aha moment or an epiphany, whatever you want to call it. And that is that first, in exactly the moment when you have an aha moment, two brain regions are connected to each other. So the neurons in part A and part B of your brain, they form a connection. What it means is that basically new information is linked to already present information in your brain. And you see that in a biological manner. And second, besides this connection that is formed, pattern recognition, it also releases a little bit of dopamine in your brain. Now, dopamine is a feel-good and a reward neurochemical, and it's actually produced in two selected brain regions in your, and uh, yeah, in two selected brain regions, and that is the ventral tegmental area and the substantia nigra. Just for your information, you don't need to remember that obviously, but for the reward circuit, so for uh, reward responses. Only the dopamine producing neurons in the ventral tegmental area, the VTA, uh, are pretty much important to give you a bit more background information. But to the important point, what happens when dopamine is released in your brain? Well, you feel good. It's pretty much the brief, rewarding and pleasant feeling uh, that you get when you realize the two things actually fit together and you find a pattern. For example, don't overheat garlic or it gets bitter. And you realize, hold on, 
My pasta yesterday tasted weird. That's why it was so bitter, because I overheated the garlic. You make this connection in your brain, and you get this little heightening feeling, this pleasant feeling, and things click. That's dopamine. And besides feeling good and pleasant, another advantage is that dopamine, it increases focus. It increases attention. And because dopamine increases focus and attention, it makes you recognize more patterns even easier. So that's also one of the reasons why you typically get one great idea and another one and another one. So in other words, dopamine makes good idea, ideas spiral. So you make a good connection in your brain, you make a connection in your brain, dopamine is released. Dopamine makes finding more connections easier. You make another connection, more dopamine is released, etc. And of course, all of that, so connecting all of, my, all of those ideas, that will of course help you to be more creative, to be more innovative, and in the end, to achieve your goal. Now, most importantly, the brain, of course, it makes these connections between incoming information and the already saved information in your brain only if you tell it to do so. That is, if you set a goal. Now, to paraphrase the neuroscientist David Eagleman, that's that consciousness is the long-term planner, while the subconscious mind is the executive force behind it. In other words, consciousness is the CEO and the subconscious mind is the employees that are instructed by the CEO. You set a goal, your conscious mind sets a goal, subconscious mind does the work for you. So in other words, goals tell your brain, hey, hey brain, I want to do X, Y, Z. So please pick up on the things that help me to reach this goal. And please come up with ideas that help me to achieve this goal. And isn't that cool? Now, going back to the coaching business and uh, to reach an income of 100K by the end of the year, that could, for example, mean that you check uh, one of the business books you realized earlier, uh, you read it. And this book, it mentions that in order to become successful and grow your business, you should surround yourself and network with other successful people in your field because that will speed up your progress. And then you remember, hold on. I just learned that my friend's cousin is a seven figure coaching business owner. I should definitely get acquainted with him, surround myself with uh, successful people and ask for tips. Once again, that's how your brain uh, makes you aware of all of these opportunities and helps you to accomplish your goal. Could also mean that you maybe watch a video about high performance and time management, and it could give you the following tips. It could, for example, say, always focus on money generating activities. Do the most impactful task first thing in the two to four hours in the morning, in the first two to four hours for high productivity. Don't waste your time with checking social media. By the way, we spend an average of 144 minutes, which is crazy on social media. So you basically lose, the average person loses an entire day per week. Consider that. Or the high performance video might mention that you should only check your emails twice a day. So don't let your life be controlled by the agenda of others etc. It could be a lot of information like that. And all of these things then come together in your subconscious mind. So looking at the goal of making 100k, your subconscious mind might come up with the following. So it could think, wait, wait, wait. I'm not productive at all. I want to reach 100k, but I'm freaking non-productive. Many of, the tasks, uh, many of the tasks I actually do during the day that don't help to grow my business at all. I'm not focusing on money generating activities whatsoever. Or 
Yesterday, I wasted four hours responding to freaking emails. And because of that, I didn't do consultation calls uh, in which I could have recruited paying clients. I'm so stupid. I need to change that. So in the future, I should definitely do the consultation calls first thing in the morning, because again, they are crucial to hit my 100K income, income goal. And then you might realize, damn, I definitely, I easily spent two hours on Facebook, uh, Instagram and Kelly yesterday. And yeah, I should probably cut that down to 15 minutes. If I were to do that, that would give me 105 freaking minutes per day that I could use to grow my business and maybe to network more etc so once again you become aware of any information that helps you to achieve your goals and as you become aware of it you can take the necessary steps uh, to implement these things once again if you're interested in more high performance basics and of course high performance hacks as a coach myself that includes how i manage my typical 70 hour work week as a neuroscientist let me know in the comments and I'll make a video. Anyhow, on to the next point. These are probably things you have been waiting for, and that is the neuroscientific and the psychological benefits of goals. Now, there are exactly three reasons why you want to set good goals. Now, as I explained before, goals, of course, shift your perception. You pick up on goal relevant information that helps you to accomplish that goal. Second, also as I said earlier, goals instruct your subconscious mind. So goals tell your subconscious mind to link ideas and to come up with creative and innovative ideas to achieve your goal. Uh, that also means the goals instruct your brain to solve problems and to look for solutions while you work towards your goal. And now, that is also probably one of the coolest things I've learned so far. And that is the mere fact of setting a goal. Just setting a goal. A good goal, that is. Enhances your performance by 11 to 25%. As a psychologist, Locke and Latham found out. They actually did these studies in lumberjacks. And they found that giving lumberjacks a hard goal, that was to set high number of wood pieces now don't quote me on the exact number here but it could just be 100 pieces of wood in five minutes something like that along the lines so a hard goal it increased the motivation and hence it increased the amount of wood that they cut so it increased their performance by 11 to 25 percent and you have to consider that was without any reward whatsoever just setting the goal increased performance. So you basically get a free motivation and performance boost just by setting a high heart goal. I mean, isn't that cool? And of course you want that. However, once again, the point is that it's not any goal. It must be a high and hard goal. It must be a well set goal. And that brings me to the next point. So what are the characteristics of performance boosting goals. Now, first and foremost, point one, goals must be hard and challenging. And that's pretty much linked to induction of the flow state. Now, beating a challenge releases a little bit of dopamine in your brain. Once again, it gives you that rewarding feeling that you get after ticking off a task or beating a challenge. And we want that. We want that momentum. We want to set those small wins so that over time we stay motivated and improve. And of course, we feel good while we do so. Now, in this context, generally flow, the flow state, which is the most productive state in existence and the most fulfilling and most pleasant state, it needs challenge slightly above our current skill level. Now, approximately 4% harder every time seems to be ideal in this case. So the thing here is that you need to adjust challenge. Uh, you need to find the challenge goal sweet spot. So if a goal is too easy, 
then it won't keep you engaged. It will bore you. And because you're bored, your motivation will be poor. On the other hand, if a goal is too hard, then it might cause anxiety. It could demotivate you. So once again, this 4% better every time, this 4% increase seems to be approximately the sweet spot of what you should aim for. For example, if you run 30 minutes today and it feels like you got room in the tank, make it 4% harder the next time. So you could run 31.5 minutes or you run five, you write 500 words today in your, for your book, for example. It feels good, so you decide to write 520 words tomorrow. Just focus on more. You get the point. Make it continuously harder and you set good goals. Now, second, another important point is that good goals, they must be definable and not vague. Now, for example, I want to become a better public speaker. That's pretty vague. I mean, what the hell does it even mean? What does better even mean? So, in addition to having defined and not vague goals, uh, you also need to make them more specific. You need to set specific goals. The idea here of specific goals is, redu is to reduce your cognitive load. You don't want any distractions. So goals are basically a command. And the more specific and the more detailed the command is you give to your brain, the less you need to think about it, the less you need to wonder about it, the less bothered your brain is, and the less loaded your brain is. You can just focus all of your attention on doing the thing. I mean, just think about it. Let's say you were to instruct your cleaning staff to clean up a massive mansion. And you just say, clean it, clean everything. And the cleaner might look at you and say, everything? You mean the entire freaking mansion? Every single room? You mean under each table as well? Every corner? The ceiling as well? And I mean, that takes forever. And by when should it even be finished? How much time do I have? Do I have to do this until tomorrow? I mean, that's crazy. Oi. And what cleaning utensils should I even use? I mean, some of these things look really expensive. I don't know if I can't even use my pretty much my super cheap cleaning utensil here. So you get it. It just raises unnecessary questions. They occupy you. And again, increase your cognitive load, which you don't want. You want to use all of your attention, all of your focus to do the task at hand. So basically, the more details you give about your goal, the better. A good goal would, for example, be, uh, I want to practice the upcoming 20 minute, uh, I want to practice for the upcoming 20 minute presentation on Thursday so that I can deliver the talk without making any mistakes and without using any notes. It's clear cut. You know exactly what you want to do. You want to make zero mistakes. You want to deliver the talk without any notes and it should be 20 minutes long and you have to finish it by Thursday. Set and done. Which brings me to the next uh, important point for goals and that is that it must be time bound. In other words, you need to set a deadline for each goal, period. Deadlines are one of the easiest ways to increase necessity. And necessity is one of the six high performance habits, in fact. Now, necessity means that you are willing to push yourself and work, even though you don't feel like it. And as my fellow medical students probably know, I can tell you that tomorrow's deadline will make you freaking productive. And without the deadline and without the push to get started, well, you will probably never start. Let's be honest. Now, the next important point, which is the fifth in this case, is that goals must be measurable. I mentioned it earlier already. 
so you could, for example, decide to run 30 minutes today or write 500 words uh, for your book. And that is crucial because you only know whether you achieve your goal if you can measure it. How else would you know that you've achieved it? And lastly, that's also very important that the civic goal must be relevant, relevant to your greater goals. So every small goal that you set should help you in achieving a greater goal above it. So that means that you should have a goal hierarchy in place. So you basically start with your mission, your dream, your purpose in life. Or like the flow researcher Stephen Cutler calls it, your massively transformative purpose. Now the idea here is that your MTP, your massively transformative purpose, is something gigantic, something huge, that sounds borderline impossible. Now in my personal case, uh, my MTP is to bring a treatment for Alzheimer's disease into the clinic. And from this dream, from this massive goal, you reverse engineer, you go backwards. So you sequentially break down your dream or your massively transformative purpose into smaller goals. So you break it down into high and hard goals, which are normally one to five years long, yearly goals, quarterly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, daily goals, and finally individual clear goals for the day. So if you want more insight into this goal hierarchy, hierarchy and how you set it best, and how you of course schedule goals effectively on a weekly basis, once again, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video for you guys. Anyhow, on to the next point. Now, just discussing the characteristics that good goals have, you might think, Nick, you kind of described smart goals, didn't you? And my answer is, well, yes, I did. Almost. I dropped the A of smart because A stands for attainable. Why did I do that? Now, and it's because of something that is known as the Pygmalion effect or the self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, the Pygmalion effect, it means that your beliefs influence your actions and your actions ultimately impact the outcome. Obviously, you do it or you don't do it. And whether you do it or not, that decides whether you get results or not. And it's actually typically seen in the context of other people, the Pygmalion effect. Uh, for example, if you have the limiting belief that you are not confident, then you will unconsciously act towards others in a way that shows that you're not confident. So if you believe that you're not confident, you might show a weak and submissive body language. You might talk with a squeaky or a toned down voice. Maybe you stutter, whatever, it could be anything. And as a result, because you act like you are not confident, others will get the impression that you are not confident. And they will act accordingly in a way to reinforce your belief, your limiting belief that you are not confident. To give a few examples, a bully might notice your lack of confidence. He notices that you act very non-confident and he starts to make fun of you. On the other hand, it could also be the complete opposite. It could be that someone realizes your lack of confidence. And as a consequence of that, this person treats you super nice, extra nice. Or maybe he would like he would treat a little child. And you, of course, notice that. And yeah, noticing that people treat you extra nice or a little like a little child because you're just so non-confident. That's not helping you. So that's pretty much how self-fulfilling prophecies work. 
And the same is true for your goals. And that is the cool part. High expectations increase your performance. Low expectations increase your performance. Now, why is that? Because if you set high standards for yourself, and if you believe in reaching those great goals, you will make yourself rise to the challenge. You will be more inclined to push and you will get more accomplished. And it's similar to what stretch goals do. So stretch, so stretch goals, they're basically goals that are on purpose 50% harder than what you think you can pull off. So just take your realistic goals, make them 50% harder and you get stretch goals. So for example, if you want to run 60 minutes by the end of the month, shoot for 90 minutes. So the idea is that even if you fail to reach these stretch goals, you will still accomplish more, even if you only partially reach your stretch goals. And you will also learn to push beyond your comfort zone. You will learn to become comfortable with the uncomfortable, which is another high performance skill. All right, so drop the A, drop the attainable, set high expectations and crush it. All right, and now on to the last point, and that is how you can use goals to build yourself efficacy. Now, to quote the psychologist Albert Bandura, self-efficacy, according to his explanation, is the belief that one's capability to organize and execute the courses of action required uh, to manage prospective situations. It sounds extremely complicated, but in simple terms, self-efficacy is to believe in whether you can pull it off. It's whether you can believe in your capability to execute and organize the actions that you need to manage the situation. Now, Self-efficacy is not self-confidence, however. They are quite similar, but not exactly the same. Self-confidence describes how strong your belief is. So self-confidence, it judges your self-worth, your belief in your worth. While self-efficacy, it describes your confidence in your ability to deal with challenging situations and to be successful regardless. So self-efficacy is your personal judgment of how good your abilities are. And of course, the more self-efficacy you have, the more uh, capable you become in achieving the seemingly impossible. If you think you can pull it off, then you are likely to pull it off. So that raises the question, Nick, self-efficacy is cool, but how do you build it? So it's actually a quite simple process. Uh, it involves five steps. The first one is to raise your standards and your belief in what is possible. That's why you set high expectations. That's why you set enormous goals, big goals. Then you set a goal that exceeds your current abilities. You take action, you get results, and you repeat. Sounds extremely simple, but the results that you get, they will in turn expand your belief in what is possible. So you set a greater goal, you take action again, you get results again, and the more often you do that, the more confident you become in your abilities to pull it, things off and the higher your self-efficacy will become. Now, as a little bonus, and that is important in this context, and that is a key mindset shift that you need to embed in your brain, and that is that goals must exceed your current abilities. Let me repeat that. Goals must exceed your current abilities. So that means that when you set a goal, you are not good enough to reach the goal right now in this moment when you set the goal. 
are right. And the idea of let's let's go basic, let's go meta. So the idea of reaching a goal is to make you better, correct? Make you more accomplished. And to become better, you need to acquire new skills, and you need to become more capable while you work towards the goal. If a goal is a goal from let's say nothing to a million dollar company, then you probably won't be a business expert yet. You'll figure it out along the way with business courses, on the job learning, etc. And if you start out with zero, you probably don't have a perfect product yet, or maybe you don't even have any product at all. And that's cool, because you need to develop a prototype first. You need to test this prototype. You need to refine it. And that's how you make this incredible product over time, obviously. And you probably don't have any, or maybe you only have one or two employees in your current startup. And obviously for your million dollar company, you won't stay like that. You probably won't have zero employees or maybe only one or two. You will hire skilled people that can help you to scale your product, to do more work and to save time. So over time, uh, obviously your capabilities will increase. You will become smarter. You will develop better products. You will hire people. You will make money, etc. So as you work towards your goal, you become, will become better and better until you finally reach the goal and reach the next level with it. So that by default means that goals must exceed your current abilities. So in summary, if you use goals correctly, then goals are key tools to boost your performance, to enhance your motivation, and to acquire empowering beliefs that will make you incredibly successful. Now, given how crucial beliefs are, I also recommend you to check out part one and two of my belief series. Uh, I link it in the comments for you guys. And in these videos, I explain the link between your subconscious beliefs, as well as high performance and long-term success. That's part one. And also how beliefs affect your perception. That's how beliefs are actually formed in our brain, which is part two. And I will also be coming up with part three of the belief series, and that is a no bullshit method to change your limiting beliefs for good. And I'm not kidding when, uh, kidding when I say that because the brain, it has a bullshit filter. It does. So, which is why, also one of the reasons why you can't just visualize yourself confident, for example. You need to do something in order to do so. So in any case, stay tuned, stay tuned for the belief video. Uh, video. And that brings us to the end of the video. So as always, if you like the video, please like, drop down your comments and thoughts and your opinion. I'd love to read it. And don't forget uh, to subscribe and hit the notification bell, of course, to stay in the loop for future videos. And it will also help me to spread the word, help the channel to grow. And of course, it allows us to build a community. Of